Ellie, look who's here. You might not recognize her. The masked red-headed woman. It's Tatiana Keegan. <laughs> or Paul Keegan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is exciting. It's Hi, so guys. <laughs> Hello. It's so early in the morning and already just getting shotgunned with energy. I'm so excited. Yes, yes. I had my vodka already, so I'm sad. I, I, I'm ready to rock and roll. Wait. Uh, is it something wrong with my face? Uh, uh, yeah, you know, your mouth looks a little different. Yes. I thought I put the lipstick on. Do you see my lipstick? What color it, is my lipstick? It looks like, look like it kind of s smeared and speckled all over your face. Holy moly. I pro it was probably too dark when I was putting this on. Let me look at the mirror. Ah, ah, I'm so in heaven with those freaking masks. I forgot to take it off. <laughs> oh, hi. You see my lipstick now? <laughs> I thought that was your natural lip color. <laughs> the illusion is shattered. Uh, hi, guys. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> that, that's a nice honestly, summary. <laughs> honestly, you want an honesty? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Ooh, rock and roll. Well, that's a roller coaster, as you know uh tough very tough um hard times a lot of struggles um unemployment mm -hmm. uh lost uh members of the family my husband's family uh mm -hmm. his parents and um you know having a teenager at home uh trying to go through all this puberty in you know close spaces between three of us and two cats on top and um, <laughs> trying to find a high school for her doing everything online mm. uh, my husband being unemployed so yeah i think it's enough right so really hard very hard well i mean i can appreciate that it's hard everywhere but i still have to say you would never know it watching your videos like you are oh my you God. don't bring whatever's happening in unless it's positive your videos are still amazing like you're still killing it thank you i get goosebumps uh well uh yes that that's my religion and dancing was always my religion and i knew that because it helped me through um well first of all it helped me to leave this country where i'm from I, you know i left russia so it's because of dancing and it helped me to go through very difficult times when I was here by myself, go through my first divorce with a Russian dude and, uh, you know, through a lot of difficulties. But when pandemic happened, that's when I, I realized that this is my religion because if it wasn't for that, I don't know how I would deal with this. Even, and I dance a lot. I think I danced more in one year on 14 months that I probably danced in my entire life because, mm -hmm. because that was, I had to do that. And because there was so much pain inside and fear and, uh, trauma and, you know, it was a scary time. I thought we were going to die. I thought that was it. Yeah. Like they were always talking about, uh, third world war three. Well, I thought this, that was it. It's just very different war. You know, it's invisible war, uh, invisible enemy, and we're all going to slowly <laughs> and die. So that's why we just locked myself in the living room. I moved everything, couch. Well, you saw my ballroom, right? My living room. This is a <laughs> <laughs> that's all I could do. Three by four, I had to fit in. And I was just dancing, 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 dancing day and night. And like during the day, I would practice five, six hours. I would go running. I would do yoga online, of course. And at nighttime, I would listen to the music and pick my next number. So I wouldn't really sleep at night as well. You know, I, I would be just going three o'clock in the morning, making notes, you know, watching some other YouTube videos, getting some ideas and costumes. Oh, wait, what I'm going to wear? Well, I had some wardrobe and then eventually it, it started going, you know, I used all my costumes and clothes and my husband's clothes and my daughter's clothes. I said, okay, now what's next? Well, luckily, there are a lot of thrift shops around <laughs> mm -hmm. and Salvation Army and Goodwill. 
So now I became a regular there. So everybody knew me, who I am, and all the stores, and knew my name. And they became, we became friends on Instagram. They would follow me. I would go and they're like, okay, what's now? I said, I cannot tell you what number I do, but I need something red with the sparkles or something tight with the stripes. They're like, okay, here we go. So that's what I was doing. So I really created myself a job, full-time job with one employee, which is me. And I was doing a real, I think I did a very good job. And that kept me sane because, it, and even though I was still struggling with panic attacks, anxiety disorder, which I always had, but that really elevated. So that was hard, but, um, but at the same time, dancing, this is it. I swear by it. Now I really can say dancing is, is my religion and I swear by this. <laughs> Well, you've got a couple of converts, I think, to your religion. Um, <laughs> well, probably more than a couple, a couple here, but so many have been inspired by those awesome videos. I'm, I've got so many questions about the videos, but okay. I did want to say it's really cool and apparent how it was uh, such a great effort, but also a family affair <laughs> with, with your daughter kicking off each class right with the uh with the, the 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 clapper and announcing action time to start recording and paul behind the scenes controlling the camera and and doing the tech stuff so we do want to say thanks to them as well but tatiana i think so many in the dance community have been inspired and uplifted by those wonderful videos and the classes for sure Right. And it was such a generous thing you did starting those classes and, and putting them out there for free. So many people, especially earlier on in the pandemic, where it was really hard to get out and do much of anything. Yes. Right. Well, yeah. that was my idea. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no. More because I have a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> Shut me up. Put that face <laughs> It is, so, uh, it is 9 30 in the morning how are you this energetic i absolutely love it sorry yeah. Dave, go ahead so, well uh, where did you get the idea uh, about this class yeah and you started the videos i think it was kind of like a promotional video right uh, yes. letting yes. people know about your class like i thought oh that's really cool and then there was another one and another one and another one. And they were so amazing and so creative and such a, such a wide spectrum of dances and ideas and mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. T t tell me how you got the idea. Okay. Originally. Well, uh, idea of doing those posts. Well, there was no idea yet. First it was just desperation. No, first it was a fear. And uh, the day when we got on the first day of lockdown, I, locked myself in the living room and I started practicing my Roomba walks and my routines with my partner who I usually dance and I'm like well how much can I do this this is boring and this is very well I'm just crying and I'm doing my Roomba walk I was like it's not gonna work said, well, what else can I do with myself so I went running and as I was running you always get a lot of good ideas when you run I don't know how you if you get ideas when you're running and if you do run but if you do run <laughs> or walk or swim or bike I think this kind of exercise, you know, brings you interesting ideas. So as I was writing, I'm like, I have to do something. I have to help, not me, but I thought right away, I have to help my community, my people, because now everybody's just sitting at home, just like me on the couch, cries or freaks out and eats and drinks and maybe uh, binges on the, all the movies or something. But I'm sure a lot of people sitting and watching this news and watching and watching and watching, getting more and more terrified because nobody could stop watching the news, what's happening. Yeah. So, but we had to peel off that and, you know, pre preoccupy our minds with something else. So, so as I'm writing, I'm thinking, okay, I can start teaching a class because right before I took a yoga class and since we couldn't go to the school anymore, uh, they did online class and they were trying to, so the first time they didn't know what to do. And so it didn't work out. And so they offered it on Instagram live. So they were like, it doesn't matter if you pay or not, you just can take this class. So I did take this class and that's what gave me an idea. I was like, all right, 
I can do the same thing on Instagram Live for everybody who wants it. I'm not going to charge anything because I just want to help. And what I'm going to teach? Well, long time ago in old dance sport, I used to teach this Latin aerobics class. I came up with by, by, by myself about this. I had this one woman, she came to me and she said, I want to lose weight. What can we do? But I don't have a partner and I don't want to dance with a partner. But how can I do something very uh, physical and learn something, some dancing, but I don't want to touch anybody. And I said, great, I'll t what we'll do, we'll divide the whole hour in 15 minutes and we'll do 15 minutes cha cha, 15 minutes samba, rumba and jive. Or jive can be mambo, something fast or pasa doble. And that's what I start doing with her. So, and then other people saw it and then they asked me to teach them. Then I start teaching the some sort of like semi-private lesson. And then Paul Pelicoro saw it and he goes, why don't you make it as a group class? So he turned into group class and we start calling this Latin aerobics. And then it become, became very popular. We, I had a lot of people who come there and they didn't have any experience in Latin dancing, but they were learning this as they were moving along. It's almost like a Zumba, right? It's very similar. But that was way before Zumba. I came up with my own Zumba. So anyway, when people start losing weight and they were excited and they start telling other friends, they were bringing other friends to this class. So it became very, very big. But then I, I left dance sport. So I stopped teaching group class. So that's why when I was running, I was like, oh, wait, I used to teach this class in aerobics. Maybe I can do it again, recreate it. So in between, so Instagram life and I offered this and how it, that's the whole stuff do. But my husband goes to me, Paul goes to me, well, but we have to promote this class. So let's do a little real. And so that's where my daughter jumped in and she recorded me doing yoga poses and then pretending I'm running. And then she edited everything. And then she goes, so what kind of song? I said, well, I think we have to do Alton John's uh, song, um, Still Standing. You know, that's all right. Anyway, so she put it on, she edited, she cut it, and we made, I don't know, it was like three, four minutes real, something like this. So that's how it started. Uh, and I started teaching this class, but I thought, okay, well, but I have to promote it every single time. So I cannot put that same reel because it would be boring and people would go, like, oh, here we go again, the same. <laughs> so I can, at first I would just do like little snippets I started having ideas. Oh, well, just take a picture. So my daughter took a picture of me putting the shoe on. So and I would promote, okay, tomorrow, like my Robbers class, five o'clock, you know. Then I was like, all right, well, sh I know she does a lot of TikTok. So maybe I can do some kind of TikTok. So we did little something and I'm like jumping in my uh, pajamas and then I jump out and I'm already in good clothes and doing jive. And it's like 15 seconds, thanks. So she start, we start doing this. And then one day I was listening to the music and it was really cool, like Pasa Doble music, but very different. And I thought, what can I do with this? Oh, I can grab my ribbon because I used to do rhythmic gymnastics and I do some kind of Pasa Doble with a ribbon. So I did this and that's how the whole thing started. I was like, why do I have to limit myself? I can do rhythmic gymnastics. I used to do Russian folk. I'm trained in ballroom and Latin and salsa and hustle. Uh, and theater arts, and um, I used to be a handball player, European handball player, where, you know, there's so many things I can do. I used to play basketball. Uh, I used to be a swimmer. So I decided, what the hell? I don't know how long we're going to sit in that bullshit, but I have to keep coming up with some ideas so people are interested. And then, I, and I was like, and why do I have to wear high heels anyway? This is stupid. I can do bare feet. Mm -hmm. I can wear low heels. I can wear socks. And so that's how it, it started rolling and unraveling. And then I got into this so much that I couldn't stop. I love it. I couldn't sleep. And then I would do more and more. And when things sort of start opening up and I said, honey, but I'm not done yet. Wait, pandemic is almost over. He goes, no, we still, it, I think it's still going to be. So I was nervous that when this pandemic is almost over. Well, it wasn't over, but I thought it was over. I was like, what am I going to do? I have so many ideas. I have a list of songs I would like to do. And how, how when, how am I going to do this? And then, of course, he would offer, oh, look, it's a nice day outside. Why don't we go and bring it outside? And then we'd go to the park. And so that was a lot of his ideas as well. 
So like, it was a teamwork. It was my daughter, she, in the beginning, she was only recording and editing. But of course, she's a kid. And as she's editing, she's doing something else on computer. And it was like two, three hours later, honey, did you do my video? Oh yeah, mom, I'm still doing this. I'm like, why does it take so long? Well, guess what? She was playing games. She was chatting to her friends, but she wouldn't tell it to us that. So I was like, how long can it take to edit? Then I would be, so finally Paul goes to her, honey, teach us what, how to do it and we will do it. And so since then, uh, Paul took over and he started recording all the videos and then editing. I mean, every night we'd sit down, we'd take the video, we'd put the music over and then we talk and we decide how to edit, what to cut. So that became his job. I said, look, don't ask me to edit. I am, I'm just a creator here. <laughs> <laughs> the diva. Yeah, sure. But, and you do the editing and I'll do the rest, but he, he's a big part of it because he constantly gives me ideas. Sometimes like, honey, I don't know what song. Well, what about this song? Boom. And ideas, like I have glasses, but why, why do you have your glasses? Well, can you do something else with this? Well, it's an idea. Why do you have your hat? I mean, so play with this. So because he used to do theater, a lot of theater. And so he was almost like a director. He doesn't know much about dancing, but he knows about stories. So he's a journalist, he's a writer, he likes stories. When I done something, he always sees the story, not my dancing. So that's why it became a family business, really. And every class, sometimes my daughter is busy doing homework or she's with her friends outside. I said, honey, would you like to help me to do the, you know? And she goes, yes, yes, mom. And she would drop everything and come. And I was shocked. I was like, why does she want to do it? And 14 months later, I mean, 15, we're still doing this. She still wants to help. I don't know. Some kind of God knows what. <laughs> that's that's awesome and sweet actually it's really it's really nice yes, uh, yes. Everyone, and you can see together. how my, our daughter grows from like little kid like over 14 months you can see how she's turning different person like i see sometimes you know those videos pop up on my facebook and they say oh this is from yego and she's there almost like a little kid and how much she grew it's nice to see also the difference uh, in yeah. in how much she grew I believe she joined you in a in a couple of the videos dancing. Yes. Together with yes. you, yeah, a little bit. Yes, yeah. yes. That's that's cool. It, yeah, it was sort of my idea. I offered to her. She didn't say no. I was like, okay, let's do it. But of course, it was fighting and arguing and don't tell me what to do and walking out and <laughs> rolling eyes and. Uh, but then we would talk and it was like, listen, it's important to mom. Can you do this? And she would do it. And sometimes she would choreograph my dancing, you know, and I'm like, all right, fine. Because she's a dancer. She, she didn't dance ballroom, but she danced since three years old, mm. but she's a dancer. Yeah. That's so sweet. So you did so many videos and so many ideas and you took it, stung them outside. Like there was, um, you know, someone on, on the stoop uh, or on the street. Uh, there was one I was watching not too long ago, and you're you're dancing in the middle of the street, and some some car pulls up behind you, and he's kind of patiently waiting, like who's this crazy lady? I need to go. <laughs> but it was they were so uh, cleverly put together. There's another one with you on the basketball court. I didn't know you were you actually played basketball, but you had a few where you had other dancers join you. Yes. Um, yeah. So how did that happen? Okay, well, I had two, uh, two groups. One is Joel uh, and um, Bibi. That's my friends from Stepping Out. We used to work together. And, and actually, they were both my students uh, dancing together and dancing with other people. So a long time ago, we used to work together. However, we also were very good friends. And so when pandemic happened, and one day I was walking in Park Slope, where I live, on the street, and Joel and Bibi live somewhere, I think in South Slope. So around the same area, they were also taking a stroll. It was like very cold and we ran into each other and we couldn't stop talking because we all were so uh, tired of sitting at home and not socializing. So we just talking and talking and talking. It was cold, but we couldn't stop talking. Finally, I said, look guys, do you wanna be part of my numbers? Because you know it's great to have a company. And, and they said, yes. So I said, I have a song, why don't we do it in the park? Because it's uh, with the masks and distance, it was very safe and they agreed. And that's how we started doing it. So a couple of weeks, we would just get together in Prospect Park and I would choreograph and we'd spend a couple hours at a time if it's a good day. 
and practicing. And then eventually I said, okay, let's record. So of course my husband <laughs> director came <laughs> and recorded us and we edited. So we did a couple numbers. And then I also have a couple, uh, Sam and Vincent, they're my students for, I would say four years already. And so when pandemic happened, they didn't stop taking my lessons, but online. So they were in their living room. I was in my living room. So we were working like this for a while, virtually. And eventually I said, well, do you guys, do you mind if I, if I find some studio around in Brooklyn, would you like to meet there? So, because they were getting tired of dancing in the living room, it's they're tiny and there are two of them trying to do samba, it's impossible. Well, you know, David, right? Yeah. And I'm sure Kelly, you know too, mm -hmm. you know, this is traveling dances. So they were getting miserable and they're bouncing against the walls. They said, okay, so I found the studio in Brooklyn and it's all by appointment, but it's very spacious. And we would open the windows, having two masks, all of us. I wouldn't touch them. They would just touch each other. And that's how we start working, uh, just private lessons. And eventually we decided to do a couple numbers. So we did one in the park, three of us, but then it got colder and Vincent got little lost the interest and he said, I don't want to do it. Why don't you two of them continue doing it? So Sam and I continue doing this and then we came up with this couple dances. So that's how we, it went. So yeah, so all of them, of those people, you know, we live around and they were my students, but also very good friends because, and it was just really, it's like a highlight of the life at this point because we were socialized we were talking in person <laughs> right that, yeah that's why it was yeah, amazing it, it was it was highlight i was i was so happy and i didn't care about having a partner i just wanted to be with somebody next to me not through the screen but like in person dancing and sharing all the jokes. And of course, with the mask, it's so hard to breathe and we'd be out of breath all the time. Like, <gasps> you know, with the two masks on and just, it, it was hard, but we would laugh so hard because we were like, <laughs> what happened to us? Are we that all the breathing so hard? But we know why, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so the variety of the music like you, you mentioned you stayed up late and, and sometimes Paul made suggestions. I just love the variety that you had gone through and some of them are so clever and things that, you know, it wouldn't have occurred to me to, to dance to. Oh yeah? Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I will tell you, this is an obvious dance number, but I think out of all of them, I've got so many favorites, but probably my all-time favorite is the one you did, uh, the West Side Story song, America. I think it's just called America. Or yes, da, da, yes. Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and you 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 hit all the highlights on it, like just so snappy, and it's, it's I love that number. Yeah, some of the others, you, you put on these kooky outfits, and <laughs> we're going to put some references in the podcast to little snippets so people can get a sample because... Uh, you go from some that are very lyrical or more ballroom and some that are very kind of classic Latin type routines and some are just wackiness and Chacaron. hilarious. Talked about it. Your son used to listen to this on Chacaron, Chacaron. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh my God, that song? Yes, that song is amazing, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I did you finish? <laughs> yes. Oh no! Come on, say more. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you more compliments. <laughs> we'll have to. Uh, oh. Go ahead. <laughs> so, I, I know it must be quite a challenge to record for even the class and live streaming because of the streaming platforms will monitor and do you have rights to this yes. and cut yes. it out and i saw that at times just with the classes that was a challenge right you're trying to use a piece of music and it's really great it's perfect for the class and what you're wanting to show but instagram live does not like this particular piece of music yeah. or i know at one point you changed over to using facebook live right because of that mm -hmm. yeah how did you end up dealing with that over time it seemed that it got 
better. I'm not sure if I'm. I'll that's tell you why. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Well, first I was using all the music I love, right? And of course, a lot of you have to have rights. And I try. I looked into that. Paul and I looked at it. It's very complex. It's, it, it involves a lot of money, and we just couldn't. So then we decided to download some. It's a free music you can use. And we looked at this, and it was so fucking boring. I'm sorry for my language. It's boring. I cannot teach yeah. that. You yeah, wouldn't once, mind. Once, once you get into that no right stuff, it's very bland. It's very. Ooh. It's, Ooh. There's no. Hope. There's a reason why you don't need rights for it yeah. often, right? Exact reason why those are. But, uh, if I did it maybe once, a, a, you know, in in a month maybe, but I had to do it three times a week playing that music. Boy, I would lose all my clients. I wouldn't have any motivation. So, so I start looking through the songs, like the ones who always get, get blocked. And I start looking through the music, which was done for ballroom dancing. You know, there was a lot of um, albums like ballroom, um, Latin Jam, something like this, which specifically was, and they never get blocked. Yeah. Okay. So every time I would listen and I would play it and I was like, oh, okay. So that's how I started. I started using all this ballroom music. And there are a million albums there. Mm -hmm. And very new ones and the very old ones. I mean, I cannot, not from the top of my head, what they are, but they all go through. So they never get blocked. So I decided it's maybe not ideal, but it's still, it's, it's a good music. So I decided to use all that. And that's when they stopped blocking me. Once in a while, I was like, okay, let me just throw something I like. And boom, they blocked me right away. So, and I don't blame them. Of course, artists need to make money on that every time I use their song because they make so little. I use Spotify and Spotify doesn't pay good, all this artists. So I get it. Um, so that's how I start going to surround it. But for my posts, unfortunately, I, I mean, I have to use the music I want to dance to. And a lot of times it's been partially muted, but two times they muted me completely. There was a Prince by Prince, the, the song Kiss. They just muted me fully. And, and the other song is just from some uh, French movie. I did it early in pandemic and they just completely muted me. But otherwise they do partially mute. And so I, you know, I get away with this, but yes. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is such a challenge. And I think people have encountered that if they do performances like pro-ams or uh, often want to have their performance recorded or even professionals. Right. And post them. It's always a challenge. Like, you know, it gets muted in some countries yes, or not and I, I, I suspect that the maybe the arrangements that are done for those um, ballroom albums because they own the rights and they maybe understand that people want to share it in that way. Yeah, so yeah. they, and you know, they might show an ad with it or something, but they choose not to mute it. I, can't, I guess the owner of the rights gets to decide what kind of actions get taken if they want uh, to have it muted. Maybe that's like, why they give a little break to us because really, I mean, we are poor dancers. We don't make a lot of money and now we have to pay for all this rights. Yeah. I mean, yep. you know, I don't have sugar daddy, you know, I'm trying to survive. <laughs> you know, uh, you've already discovered you don't need any sugar. You don't need any more energy. <laughs> we don't need any of that. Uh, I need I need this sometimes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I was thinking, I don't know if you've ever seen how CNN has this thing they call CNN Heroes or Hero of the Year, something like that. I want to just say for what you did through the pandemic for the dance community, you're a talk dot dance hero, Tatiana. Uh, we really appreciate it. I know it hasn't been easy for you, but you always come on with all this positive energy, a big smile. I, <laughs> I, I love your smile when you dance, by the way. Um, it's just so infectious. And, you know, I see you smile and I want to smile, right? Uh, even though I'm sitting in my home and I'm, you know, or in the classes, I, I'll join your class and I'll half the time I'm, I know I'm not doing what you're doing, but it doesn't matter because I'm having fun and I'm sweating and I'm getting some form of exercise oh, that's it. and, and 
yeah, it's it's just great. And and the great thing is you can actually go back, you know. And if you really if you really want, well, wait a minute, I didn't yes. get that, but after the fact, I can go back because you you make them available not just in live format, but they're posted there. So yes. sometimes yes. I yes. found it, and actually at, at some point, I know the time at which you were doing them became almost impossible for me to attend live, which really kind of bummed me out. But I, I love that I could still go and sometimes at eight at night, tune in and say, okay, let <laughs> let me try and do Tatiana's oh, class. That's but. the whole idea. I wanted to help my peoples and anybody really. And uh, just be, have, have it available because there are, I had so many people, especially in the beginning of pandemic in different countries. I had Turkey, Poland, Italy, France, Germany, Switzerland, and there's different time zones. There's one girl, she's still with me, she lives in Ukraine, and it's a different time zone. So that's why I thought if they cannot take it right now, they always can. In England, I had a girl from England, uh, they can take it at any time. So I would always save them and just have them on timeline. And I have this one student, Jakey Draper, you probably saw her name all the time, David, right? Yep. She's in the classes from day one. And I know each other, I know her from like 20 something years ago at old dance sports. She was a student, but then she came and started taking those classes now. And what was happening on Wednesdays, she had some other things to do. So she couldn't take live class, but she would always take on Thursday morning. And every week for a year, and then she would always write to me and say, okay, thank you. I did this and this, and can we repeat this? So she, it's oh. amazing. I always knew even on Wednesday, if I don't have a lot of people, I don't have anybody, well, it actually never happened, but I always knew that Jackie is always going to take this class on Thursday morning and she's going to write to me. And so it was very important for me to keep going, you know? So, yeah, and I had a lot of people like that. And I do still have this class, so, you know, um, but it's only on Mondays now. I don't do it three times a week like I used to do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I have only on Mondays. Actually, I have it tomorrow, but I am doing this, and it seems like a lot of people, and I still want to keep going because I keep asking. If somebody needs, even if I have one person who wants this class, I'm going to continue doing this because I believe in consistency. I believe in you, whatever, wherever you put your mind into, you have to do it all the way to the end, finish it, have a closure. So that's why I'm still consistent with those classes. Not as often, but I want to do it till last person says, okay, I had enough. Then I'll stop. <laughs> then, I feel, then I feel like this project is done. Yeah. You know, and I feel good. I feel good that I, that's what my parents always taught me. Whatever you start, you always want to finish it. And that's what I teach my daughter. Don't drop it in the middle of it. It's easier. It's much harder to be consistent. You do it for a week, you do it for two weeks, you do it for a month. Eventually, it becomes a routine. It's hard. It's challenging. And uh, preparing for those classes, it wasn't just like I walked out, walked in and started teaching. I would spend two, three hours getting ready for this class every single time. You would be surprised. Why? Well, first I had to come up with the music. I have to have line up. I have to decide what kind of dances because it wasn't just, okay, we're dancing for dances and that's it. I had to get, you know, put in different dances, mambos, salsas, swings. Then I had to put different uh, order. Let's say today we're doing samba, then rumba, and then samba and then cha cha, and samba and cha. So I had to do different rounds. I had to spend, so it constantly, I want to change all the time so people don't get used to it and get bored. Uh, I had to come up with the idea for a little choreography. You remember how first 15 minutes we always warm up and then next 15 minutes we're learning something new. Either I explain something mechanical about the dance, how the hips work or some particular figure, or we're doing piece of choreography. We're learning some samba, little piece of choreography, a couple phrases, and then we dance a lot of the dances. So it's a lot of work. And even for warm ups, I didn't want to always do the same head to the left, head to the right. I always, I would go to YouTube videos and watch what other people do, what kind of warm ups, and maybe, and so it's a lot of work. And I had to also come up with the phrase of the day, right? So I had to look through all these words of encouragement, and I have to go on Google and look for something. 
so I keep it interesting. Yeah. Anyway. I, I think that that really says something because I'm sure there's a lot of people who are, are grateful that, wow, isn't this really sweet that Tatiana is giving an hour of her time and it doesn't, it's not, because you do it so well, it's not obvious that it's probably not an hour. It's probably three hours, right? Or more, yeah. right? Same with the videos. The videos are 60 or 90 seconds, probably whatever fits in, in the Instagram. There's a kind of, yes. person, right? Uh, and probably people think, wow, isn't she creative that she just kind of walks out and bends you know, 90 seconds doing that. And at some point you posted some blooper videos uh, and I, you know, already. Yeah. And it really helps illustrate, wow, okay, yeah, it's not just her you know, <laughs> being so like, you know, she walks out and just improvises this, right? Well, that's what sometimes people ask me, like, is it improvisation? God, no. It's <laughs> choreography. I practice. And then, the, you know, sometimes recording takes very quick, like couple takes. Well, it never takes couple takes. It takes a lot. Yeah. But... You know, but if it is something intricate like a cape or a ball, right, or a ribbon, that freaking ball keeps running away from me. You remember this book, right? I don't remember. It's just, oh, I know. Uh, I'm all, trust me, it takes much longer than everybody thinks. Yes. Because it has to be that one take, which is sort of okay and I'm happy with, because most times I'm, ne I'm never happy. And we would do it all, and now Paul goes to me, honey, I know you're not happy. You want to do it again? Yeah, let's do this again. Oh, look at you. You you did, look how much space on the left. And there's not enough space on the right. Goes, honey, it's good enough. No, it's not good enough. Do it again. Oh, look at you. We didn't go down. You had to go on the floor because I'm on the floor. And you're standing up. No, honey, it's okay. Nobody's going to know. Yes, I know. Go down. So, we, you know, through the... Through the year, we, we came up with so many ideas how he's going to go down with me on the floor because he's standing against the uh, window. And so first we would put little chairs, then uh, towels, then a uh, pillow, so how he could go. And then he practiced how he's going to squat. And then sometimes he goes to the squat and he cannot get out. He got stuck there <laughs> because his muscles got tired. Or, you know, his finger in the camera and was like, honey, what is that? That's your finger. Oh, nobody's going to know. Yes, I know it. I can see it. Do it again. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> so it takes and takes and takes before it, it's sort of okay one. And sometimes I'm all beaten up. I'm a bruises because if I roll on the floor, you know, after rolling on the floor for a couple of days and for a couple hours every day, you yep. so bruised up. Oh my God, I can't explain to you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's awesome that Paul is so supportive. Um, oh God, from day one. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Very cool. So you, you had told us like in the beginning, you were really forcing yourself. Or not really forcing yourself. I don't want to say it like that. You were really just getting in your space and dancing. Just spending time dancing. Yes. And then... And then now you've got this uh, this class you do and everything. Do you do you still try to balance getting that dance time in for yourself, or are you mainly focused on like your classes and stuff? No, no, I start practicing with my partner. Okay. A month ago, yeah, Anatoly okay. and I we both vaccinated, uh, oh. so we started practicing because we're getting ready for competitions. Oh. So now, yes, yes. Um, because we are part of two different organizations, USA Dance and also in DCA. So, mm -hmm. and they all have nationals. So we have to go to nationals uh, and there are a lot of competitions available. So we just feeling whenever we are ready, we get in better shape. Uh, he needs to lose some weight. Uh, so when he's in the better shape and we both can <laughs> dance five dances through and not drop dead, we are ready oh. to rock and roll. Oh. So yes, between my practices and this class now on Monday and still post, like today I have to go to the post. So I was practicing whole week my dance and today we're doing some uh, recording. You'll see it later. It's gonna be outside, yes. So there are still a lot of projects and I have some one online Plus, I'm still teaching privately. This girl who started taking this a year ago and we're still working on this. She lives in Massachusetts. 
And I have now a few students. I start teaching in the dance studio. And I'm waiting for David to come back when he's back from Canada and he feels like he's ready to and don't feel embarrassed. Everybody in the same boat. Everybody got pregnant, men and women. <laughs> and well, they all have to. <laughs> yes, so yes. that's fine. I'm accustomed to this, not a problem. So don't feel embarrassed. We'll start with the regular hokey pokey or da 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 da. We'll start with that, David. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still very busy. I mean, it's not as many lessons I would like to because, you know, it's still on hold, a lot of people waiting. Uh, a lot of people are so tired of sitting, so now they're going for vacations or changing jobs. But I think in September, it's really going to come back. Yeah, yeah, with the with the summertime, because I don't know about you, but typically dance slows down a little bit in the summer. Oh. Everyone's outside, right? Oh, yes. But then the fall kicks in, and especially yes. now with vaccinations and stuff like that, yes. I think the fall is going to be big. Yes, yes. So that's why now it's still, it's a transition time. There's not a lot, but I'm trying to stay busy and I'm still, you know, I don't want to slow down myself. That's why I still want to do those posts because I see, I'm still not done. I still have songs. <laughs> I would like to express myself through. <laughs> that, is awesome. that is awesome. Tatiana, once again, thank you so much. Um, we i'm speaking for our whole audience we love you we love what you're doing uh we wish you all the best thank you thank you that means a lot to me and thank you for choosing me again because i talk a lot i guess you have to cut half of it out but uh <laughs> we would listen honestly i would i'll i'm excited to let you just go you're just yes so forthcoming with awesomeness. I love it. It's great. Thank you. I wouldn't take the credit. I always say when people say, well, you're so amazing. You're talented. Uh, I don't take credit. There's something else. I believe there's something that connects it. And I'm just an instrument. And it, I don't believe in God, but I believe in, you know, higher powers, universe. We, call, we can call this God. I don't believe in this guy with a beard and that's God. So anyway, so there's something just goes through, and I'm just like a vehicle. I'm like um instrument. It just I let it go through me. Uh, and um, yes, I would like to accept the Oscar. Uh, when are you gonna send it to me? <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, I'll be coming to a studio near you to deliver it in person. Oh, I love it. With the fruit. With the fruit basket, right? That's how. Uh, and gonna... a and a bottle of vodka. Yeah. <laughs> That's, all I need. That's my Oscar. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Well, guys, I love you. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you for inviting me. Mwah. I love you both. <laughs>